Alberto Levy is an innovation evangelist and a professor at IE Business School. And you will want to have your phones ready for this session because you're going to take a lot of videos and photos because you're about to witness something extraordinary. I'm going to leave it at that and welcome Alberto Levy to the stage. Levy, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. You, you don't know how, how I feel so excited as we were talking a little bit before. Uh, the opportunity to, to learn and to show a little bit of uh, actually my dreams and what I do. So this project is called Brain Art and what we just did together was the creation of a, an art piece um, that it's only possible through the mix of art and technology. So the music was going through me and my emotions uh, were generating the image that we have. So we cannot repeat what just happened. Even with the same song, even if we sit here again, we play again, it would be different because the emotions, they will change. So it's in a way of uh, mixing art and technology. And this is a portable electroencephalogram. Some years ago, to have one of those devices, it was expensive, maybe you had to go to a hospital to, to, to have this in your head, and now 
you can easily buy one of those. But in the hands of a creative person, as we all are, this is not just an EEG. It's a device to enhance our human powers and to transform in something else. So how does it work? Um, it measures in microvolts the ionic changes in our brain. So we can map our brain. So we have different uh, waves uh, that we can measure and do something with it. So these devices, they can measure expressions. So whatever I do with my face, uh, it can be measured. Yeah. Also, uh, emotions, the affective part. Uh, not like measuring love or hate, but how we're feeling. We can measure this. It's very easy. And also the cognitive part. Imagine that you're thinking about something like an abstract thought, like left. Now, what is left? Left. If you keep on thinking about left, we can measure the brain activity and then find a pattern. And then it's very easy to have an autonomous car. If you want to drive this autonomous car, you can think about left and then it will go to the left. Then it will be semi-autonomous and you do this. You can have your uh, uh, motor skateboard and then control this, the speed with your brain because we can map those elements. This is myself with another device turning on and off a light in my house. I repeat, this is very easy to do and it's, it's not a complicated programming, but why we're not doing things like this? So this kind of a, it's a superpower, right? That, uh, this is not me. Uh, we have the same haircut, but this is not me. But when you see, it, it seems like science fiction that we can control things with our minds. So it, it seems that we're not using the whole power that we have as humans, but technology is here to help. But this talk is about art and technology. And again, a technical device, scientific device, easily hacked. Yeah, I had to hack it just a little bit, but it's part of who I am. Um, as an artist, I wanted to hack the world. As a technologist, I have the means to hack the world. So we're not doing this. How not make a better world? And then we can have a new dimensions of our own body and to bring something new to the world. I want to show you this video, then we're going to talk over that. Audio, please. Go beyond accessory. <sighs> Express uniqueness. Swallowable perfume. A new cycle of evolution. So, swallowable perfume. Who uses this? No one. <laughs> and why not? And the why not comes even in the design of this. The design of this didn't come from Givenchy, the L'Oreal. It came from a biohacker. Because it's easy to think perfume of a spray, right? And you spray yourself. Some people, they have this style. They spray the air and they go through. But it's spray. Now, you be creative with, with the spray. But why not thinking about something like this? To, 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 to be the body as atomizer. You take one of those and you go out to dance at night. And then you start like smelling good. Hopefully. But it's the body that's making the change. Why not think differently? And art comes to ask the questions you were not asked before. So, I want to tell, so I'm going to be a little bit biographical. I'm going to tell you the story when I learned about technology. This is myself, the one on the left, when I was 11 years old. It was my first company. I was 11 years old, and I opened a software company. And I did that because me and my brothers, this is one of my brothers, my elder brother with me, we, we got a gift from our parents and grandparents. They got together, and they gave us a computer. It was in Brazil back in 1982 in 1983, and it was very expensive. It was the, the price of a car and a middle-class family and this amazing gift. And then I made a pact with my brother. Let's not allow our parents to give us a gift like this anymore. We're gonna work, and we're gonna, if you want an, a, another computer, let's 
you know, let, let's buy with our own money. And then I remember going, this was my working clothes <laughs> in Rio, and going and to try to close a deal as a software developer. And I remember the day that the first client said, yes, I want to I wanna work with you. And then I, I, I looked at my brother and said, Oof, we have to learn how to program now. <laughs> and then there was the driver. And on the age of 13, two years later, we had four computers at home. And then we saw that, wow, the intellectual capital can be transformed. And then it was my passion, my technology. I was you know, dreaming with code. I had my own programming language. It was not that good, but it was a good exercise to have my own programming language. I, I, I developed 50,000 lines of codes for different things. I did virtual replays for football. I did so many things. And then I realized that I wasn't balanced, that I, the things that I was doing, they were, they were working fine, but they were so ugly. <laughs> that uh, I decided to search and, and, and seek art. What is art? Then I decided to, to go to New York because I, you know, it was the time I was leaving my, my parents' house and then to explore myself and the world. Searching for art was interactive telecommunications program at the New York University and, and New York was a place that I wanted to, to look for art. And what is art? It's not just aesthetics and painting to have something pretty uh, to the eyes was something else for me, but I didn't know what it was. So this picture is very significant for me. Um, I had some friends who were punks, you know. So in, in Brazil, I didn't have friends who were punks. So is this art? I had a friend that had a rice grain as a pet. A rice grain as a pet. And it was half cooked because of the summer in New York. And, and, and they had the grain. It's like, is this art? It was art because it made me ask the question, why not? My friends in Brazil, they didn't have rice grains as a pet, but why not? And then it was a matter of experimentation. You know, I was involved in different projects like robots fighting with flame flamethrowers. <laughs> and why not? Why not like try new software, new streaming, new capacity to, to, to use flamethrowers? It was like, now that I think back, it was so dangerous to do things like this. We're like in, in warehouses in Brooklyn, we had gas, we had fire, and, 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 but it was a lot of fun and we're learning. Is this art? Where is art? And it was trying to feed me the other side. I had um, the capacity to write code, to dream of code, and then what is art? And then I started to think, maybe there is a space in between. I, I don't have to be an engineer, we don't have to be an artist. Why not be human? Humans were very good of being many things at once. We do not study like this. We study to be an engineer. We study to be an artist. Why? If we were richer than that. So I was looking at magic space and thinking about the magic space. You might recognize this, this image. To, to get out of the, the planet Earth, imagine the amount of math engineering, astronautics, the science that's behind this. But being in the space and seeing this, this is art. And then, wow, look at this. I mean, imagine seeing this live with your own eyes. This is amazing. This is an explosion of senses. And I did different projects to keep on asking why. This is back in the 1988. I always liked nightclubs. So I decided to make a first an experiment to put tactile sensors in the floor of the nightclub. I would interpret how people were stepping and generating the music and the projections of the place. And then I started to have a conversation between the space and people. Space would change, people would change their behavior. People would change their behavior, the space would change. And then as well, there's a dialogue. There's a dialogue between the space and people. And then I did three parties for 3,000 people using the system. And, and it was wonderful how people appropriated of the whole installation. Let's you know, go to lounge, nobody moves. Let's go to psycho, and then people moving, and then there's dialogue between people, the environment, and music. Why not change the facade of places? Before this project, I did one, one, um, 
Uh, I did one project that would use the old cell phones, the Nokia cell phones, they were not smartphones, but they were good phones, um, to change the color of buildings, to make uh, multi-user activities just using cell phones and controlling different things. This is graffiti laser that would give laser to people in the streets and they would change the facades of building. Why not? Why not amplify, scale, giving this power to the people? This was a Christmas tree that people would generate the energy because to have a, a good Christmas you need the, the energy of a good Christmas. So you paddle, you generate energy and then you light one of the spheres and then you need 120 people to light this thing. This is an interesting project. Um, I wanted to talk about sustainability and, and new ways of uh, generating, transforming energy. So I, I did those, um, this is an urban furniture that you pedal and then you can connect your cell phone, your laptop and charge it. What I did, uh, um, I went to parks at night. I, I put many of them in, in parks without any permit, without anything. To so go to the next day to see how people would use it. Well, at the end, Toyota bought all of them and became even a, a business. But it's like, let's push the limits. Um, this is a project I did a couple of years ago here, and I was very happy that um, with Paulson in London, they would trust to tell stories. And this is, it goes beyond, because it was, the, the, the theme was endless possibilities. It's like, wow, endless possibilities. This is what I like to think about my life. Let's, let's see this uh, short video. Welcome to the Emirates First Class Lounge. Are you comfortable? It's impressive, isn't it? It's amazing. It's very well done, yeah? I really liked it. <laughs> So this is a wonderful project that's only possible when you mix art and technology because it, it comes, it starts with a spark, with an idea. How can we make this? How can we tell this story? How can we use um, the tools that we have available to do this? And it's interesting, 95% uh, of the projects that I sell, I don't know how to do it. But that's my driver. I know it's possible to do it because we have the tools, we have the talent around. And it was one of the projects. Is I was oh, I'm always trying to um, to change myself and sometimes through technology. So I'm not an artist that can paint. So and I wanted to paint. So I developed this. So the idea was to make urban interventions. So I tried this, this was in a street in Mexico, I found a wall, put my projector there, and then I started like painting. And then I started doing it like to get words and then go to different landmarks of the city, late at night, and then paint, love, faith, respect. The police didn't think it was that funny, but, <laughs> but I was not leaving something permanent, because even the feelings uh, they're ephemeral. We have to be always uh, reassuring them. 
This is the Cloud of Wishes, uh, um, an art project that I did um, two years ago. And so I was invited for, to, to see that space. It's a space in, in Gran Via, as an important avenue in Madrid, in Spain. Um, Espacio Fundación Telefónica, they had this amazing space. And I wanted to design something for the end of the year. And the end of the year is, is when people look at the sky and they wish things. They wish to have a, maybe a better job, to find their, someone uh, to love, or to be found. They wish things to the sky. And then I was traveling a lot in the time, this, why not designing a cloud? Minimal interface, a cloud, where people can wish things to the cloud and the cloud can give you things back. And the cloud could represent so many things. So the, the cloud of wishes, you get your cell phone and then you take a picture, it could be a selfie, it could be a, a picture that you have in your phone, and then you make a wish and you publish on Instagram or Twitter with a hashtag. And the cloud makes your wish to rain. So the cloud catches the wishes and bring back to reality. So as an artist, what was behind is that it has to start with us, with humans, you know, what do we want to do? And then we send this to the sky and the sky grabs the good wishes and then bring back to you. And it was an experiment uh, for 20 days. We had 600,000 people interacting directly and directly with this uh, art piece. And art can be used for teletransportation to, to take us from one point to the other, to make us think differently. And we can be immersed in, in art. Like this amazing project that you see around the world and is using technology. But the combination of things is much stronger than just one discipline. And also technology and art together can be uh, challenging. Look at this project. This project has artificial nano antigens. Those are condoms that can let go through sperm with a specific chromosome. So if you want to, be, to have a baby boy, get the blue. If you want to have a baby girl, you get the pink. And you just the right chromosome will go through. Technology can do this. An artist can bring this. Why not have, have a dress? that's based on smoke for a good entrance. So we can have the smoke. It has, it has magnetic linen that attracts the smoke and then you can just define how you want to have your dress within your dress. Again, the question is, why not? This is a smoke dress. Google knows. We've seen all the type of Google devices and we're talking about augmented reality, why not augment the sense of smell? With this, it detects even the faintest smell and also transforms this into graphics and you can visualize a smell. So it's another way of augmenting um, our capacity. Host, uh, host is a card that has yeast, so it's a live component. So when you take the host, um, as the body of Christ you have in your mouth and then you're receiving something alive. Why not? Select a DNA. So you have your belongings and someone is trying to get your belongings, then there's a spray. But it's a very unique spray. So when the police catches the burglar, it can see if touched the thing that you had, your belongings. You can buy this now, it's out of the shelf, off the shelf now. And it's a unique, so it's a selected DNA. Every spray is unique. Pharma sushi, genetic engineered fish eggs with the drug of your choice. So we can have anything. It's more fun to take this than to take a, an aspirin. You can have this with sushi. Twitter implant. Imagine paying less in your insurance with the Twitter implant, everything that goes in your mouth is sent, of course, to your mobile device. So you can even install modules, Alcoholic Anonymous, you can install Weight Watchers, you can have your Fitbit connected so you know the calories you're ingesting. This is sending messages all the time. Why not? So, to conclude, 
What is art without technology? Technology are new tools, new ways of expressing ourselves. But what is technology without art? This new way of seeing things. So, art and technology, when they meet, they have this magic space that I was talking about. But it's very natural because human beings, we're, we have you know, left, right brain, we sh this should be natural for us. And I use always a reference, Da Vinci, he called it arte scienza. It was this mix of things. The Vitruvian man is a great example. There's a, a lot of technology there and science, but also aesthetics. And, but you might say, we're not Da Vinci. Come on, Da Vinci was a misfit, illegitimate, gay, left-handed, vegetarian, erratic, a rebel. And, but he had three things that we can all have. The genius was because of three things. Curiosity, always curious to get to know about new things. Observation, a capacity of, of uh, stay still, look at things and try to make sense or be inspired by it. And imagination, what comes next? In everything it was applied. So, in the hands of a creative, a person that can observe an imaginative person, um, a device like this could be just an electroencephalogram, but also can expand our capacity and generate art and start asking new questions. Technology might try to answer some questions, but art is the one that's bringing the new questions to the table. Shukran.